Jesse Smollett, that trial, the closing arguments, um, it was contentious yesterday. I've read a little bit about it as he was um, cross-examined. Uh, let's just bring in Candace for some of the details here as yep. they're escaping me. i move a little quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Candace, mm -hmm. he, he's a trained actor, okay? And I want to know what mm -hmm. you think about how he held his up. Because it's one thing to have your narrative and the script down. And I'm not suggesting that he wasn't telling the truth. I wasn't there. None of us on the screen, we weren't there. Mm -hmm. But it's another when a good mm -hmm. prosecutor mm -hmm. gets in there and points out every inconsistency, including what he told the police about having the noose on, taking it off, putting it back, and what he told Good Morning America, which was had it on the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us how you think the cross-examination went. How did he hold up? As you said, when you have a good prosecutor like Dan Webb doing the job, certainly these inconsistencies will be glaring inconsistencies. And that's what happened when Jesse Smollett took the stand. As we heard from him yesterday, we saw a more calmer Jesse. But then today, he was combative, as you said, because there were holes that were pointed out. For example, the prosecutor talked about these private Instagram messages that Jesse sent the two brothers that are that we are, you know, talking about here. Now, in that instance, Jesse Smollett said no. No, I didn't send any private Instagram messages. And then Dan Webb showed him the Instagram messages and spent a lot of time going over. Well, listen, if you are saying this was set up in order to uh, set up some exercise or training uh, uh, a program, well, then, then, then what happened? You let these people know when the plane was arriving, when it was landing, 90 minutes before it happened, there was no follow-up. Why? He's insinuating that he knew he didn't have to because the brothers were in on it and he was in it. He, he also pointed out the fact that he did say that these two attackers were white. Now, no matter how you cut it, up, down, left, right, these <laughs> these uh, attackers, alleged attackers, mm -hmm. are not white. They are not pale. And so that's another inconsistency that the prosecutor brought up. So those are some of the things that, in terms of this explosive testimony, that, uh, that were magnified. Finally, I think that one thing that was interesting to note was the voice of the perpetrator. The prosecutor asked, well, Jesse, mm -hmm. if you've known this man, you've had a sexual relationship, you said, with him, didn't you recognize the voice? And this is when Jesse snapped back, yeah, well, mm -hmm. in the middle of it, I didn't ask, hey, is that you? So there were a couple of times that he got snippy, overall very combative, and generally just not a good day. But I will say, reasonable doubt, because the reason we are questioning this yep. right now is because there is doubt. And that's what I was going to follow up with. Uh, the burden is on the state, Candace. So did he sow a seed of doubt, at least? Because all he needs, once again, we've been talking about trials over the last couple of months. All he needs is a couple of jurors, and this is a, a, a hung jury, and basically we might have to do it as all over again. That's right. And you know what? One one other thing, Mike, having to do with the, the reasonable doubt is, 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 when we look at this, what was the motive in all of this anyway? Why why did his attack happen? Yep. Was it because the brothers wanted money or was it because Jesse was trying to kind of bolster his career? None of which there was proven on either side. He talked about how he started making $27,000, ended up making $100,000 an episode. Does that sound like someone that actually needs the money? What was it? Was there an exchange that there was this, uh, that these two men wanted a million dollars? Now, the defense is going to try to bring in this idea that there was potentially a third person, a third person that might have been white, um, and they've insinuated this throughout, and they're going to have to really kind of hone in on that on their closing argument to say that maybe these two people were not the only ones involved. That's kind of been a, a, an undercurrent in this when you read the transcripts that maybe there was somebody else involved. So if there was somebody else involved, again, reasonable doubt. All right, Candace, we got to go here in about 20 seconds. Uh, the case you go to the jury today, uh, like you said, closing arguments begin today. What can we expect? Well, listen, we're going to expect this uh, defense attorney. Listen, none of this is going to be very surprising. I think that these jurors are, have already decided, let me say that. So it's not like in these other cases where it's really consequential. What's going to be consequential for Jesse is his defense. What will she say? She's going to say what Jesse said along at the, on the stands the whole time. This is a lie. They are criminals, um, and they wanted money. She's going to hone in on that. And again, you've got that seed, probably enough to get him off.